Let's deal with the cross from a spiritual standpoint. I mean, it's going to sound a little Sunday school. It's going to sound a little elementary. But I've kind of found that in an attempt to be real theological, sometimes we don't really know anything. Okay? I mean, really. We just we got a bunch of big words, and we walk out and go, well, that was, that was good. But we, there's no experience. We don't, we, don't really, we don't really feed on it. So let's get real simple. God created a man. Imagine it like a little toy that you so badly have wanted to play with. And he fashions him out of dirt and he breathes into his nostrils. And God is so proud of him. And he pulls him out and he sets him up and he goes, look at him, he looks just like me. <laughs> the Bible says he's made in the likeness and the image of God. And God says, look at him, he's so good. He's a good looking dude. And, he, and, and there he is. And he and I talk every day. So well, every day, God would send him out and just let him run around and play in the garden. The Bible says just tend it. Tend it. Don't even have any thorns, thistles, eh, nothing to tend. He's just running around naming animals. And he, and he comes back in at night. And, him, and the Bible says he and God would meet in the cool of the day and have a conversation. And so God would walk up and he'd go, hey, Adam, how's it going today? So, you, you, saw the, you saw the giraffe? That was good, wasn't it? He said he went before he was just a horse. And then I went, yep. And I, and I, <laughs> and Adam goes, yeah, that was really good. He goes, you see my other horse, the one that looks like he's in jail? <laughs> he goes, I got all kinds of stuff, Adam. There's more where that came from. Just keep enjoying yourself. Just go out there and run. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good time. And they just, I mean, he's having this awesome relationship. And God's so excited. And Adam is naked. And he doesn't know that he's naked, but he doesn't care that he's naked. It's almost like God just creates Adam and, and, and just makes him completely unaware of anything but the glorious presence of the Father. And just this meeting that they have every day. Until Adam goes off, and you know what happens. He eats the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And instantly, Adam realizes that he's naked. And he puts an apron of fig leaves on and he covers himself up. And then he goes and hides in the bushes. And God shows up. And God shows up so excited, like he is every day. So excited to talk to Adam, which is so bizarre for the way we heard the gospel. Because all of us heard that when we sin, God needs a cooling off period. He's mad, and he don't want to talk to you for 48 hours. But God shows up, and God either A, doesn't know everything, or B, knows and still loves him anyway. I'm going to go with B. And God shows up and looking for Adam and there's no Adam. And God's hurt. He's disappointed because he's so excited every day to talk to Adam. And he goes, Adam, where are you? We're in the book. This is Genesis. Adam, where are you? And Adam is hiding out in the bushes. And he says, I'm over here hiding out in the bushes. And God says, why, why, why are you hiding out in the bushes? And Adam says, because I was naked. And God knew he was naked yesterday, but he didn't tell Adam. And so God says, who told you you were naked, Adam? And Adam doesn't know what to say, so he blames his wife, because that's where we got it. <laughs> and, so, and so Eve, ladies, don't get too excited. She just blames the pet. That was the dog's fault. Eve goes, that was the snake. And God talks to the snake, and the snake doesn't have anybody to blame. So God steals his legs, makes him crawl around on his belly forever. And so then he's gone. Well, Adam, Atlas, this is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's so beautiful because what God is doing is God is just wanting Adam to just come on over and let's just have fellowship like we did yesterday. But Adam has a mental block now. Adam has a problem called a sin consciousness because now Adam feels separated from God because Adam is aware that he's naked. Adam is aware that he has an issue and God gets angry. And here's where I think we messed it up. We always thought God got mad at Adam. But the reality is, is like any parent, God gets mad at the separation. Separation. Why does my kid feel like he can't talk to me? That upsets me. What is that school teaching my kid that they don't want to sit down and have a conversation? I'm not mad at my kid. I'm mad at somebody for getting in between me and my kid and making them feel like they can't trust me, making them feel like I'm not, I don't love them. And so God and Adam keep their distance and God keeps chasing him. How do I know God chases him? Because he sends him out of the garden and he goes with him. And every time Adam turns around, there's God like a shadow. Just staying close enough. If you ever want to talk, son, I'll be just down the hall. If you ever wanted to have a conversation, here I am. And, and it goes on and on and on and on. And you notice the distance. This man continues to be conscious of his sin and conscious of his failure until God is exhausted from chasing man. And one day God says, okay, that's it. I'm done. And he becomes... A man. 
because he's convinced that man can't do it. He can't jump the hurdle of sin consciousness. So God says, what would be perfect is if I could take all of their consciousness of failure and just pay for it. And then they would feel like they and I could have a relationship. So God wraps himself in human flesh and we name him Jesus. And Jesus comes into the timeline and he lives sinless and he lives perfect and he does everything right. And at his death, he's so perfect, he can't even die. The wages of sin is death. He can't even die. He hangs on the cross and the Bible says he gives up the ghost. He has to willingly lay down his life. He goes, Father, I can't die. I haven't done anything wrong. You can only die if you've done something wrong. So I'm going to die anyway. In effect, he commits a form of suicide. Lays his life down. Says it is finished. It is finished. They take his body off the cross. They put him in the grave. Watch where the story progresses. We go right back to Genesis. This is why some of us are very confused about the Bible. is because we don't see that the Bible is circular. We don't see that what is happening in the New Testament is just simply a fulfillment of the old. God goes right back into a garden. He had Adam in a garden, and he goes right back into a garden, the garden tomb on Sunday morning. And God looks down into the dirt of the tomb, and he fashions into himself the perfect man. And he breathes into his nostrils the breath of life, and the last Adam is born. Jesus comes up out of the tomb as the last Adam, and once again, God goes, man, look at him. Isn't he good looking? He's perfect. This time, he's perfect. Because this time... This one will never feel like we are separated. And you know why? Because at Calvary, he felt a separation. And now I have raised him up in a newness of life. I give him something I didn't give Lazarus or Jairus' daughter or the widow's son at Nain. All those people Jesus raised from the dead, they died again. But this one's not going to die again. Because this one, I'm not just going to breathe my life into him. I'm going to live my life through him. What I wanted to do with Adam was to have such a close relationship that he forgot where he ended and where I began. But then sin consciousness made him realize where he ended and I began. And he thought it was a big gulf. But this one has done it right.